Hello everyone, it's Gary, and um, just really quick, um, an announcement that I have is that I start school tomorrow. It will be the start of my sophomore year, and it's a really important year for me just because I want to get my um, GPA higher than what it is. And I mean, it's not a bad GPA, it's just, just to give me a little cushion for the sake of medical school. Um, so I'm going to have to really work my butt off this semester and hopefully I'll get the GPA higher. And just so you guys know, to help improve the videos, the organization of them, because I know that they aren't exactly always organized, I've started making lists on a sticky notepad. And I'm only using one for this video, but I bet I'll probably be using a lot more than one um, as they get more in depth. But um, what I wanted to talk about today, as promised, I'm going to get into my medical videos about medical school. Um, and basically I wanted to make a video about what makes you a qualified applicant and I'm not going to go into too much detail. Okay, like basically I'm going to give you the gist, um, kind of a general thing of what you want to do. And then later on I'll make new videos <coughs> with um, more detail about each thing that you want to do, if that makes any sense at all. I hope it does. So the first thing, um, probably the most... Uh, direct thing that you can do is your GPA. Um, that's 100% you. Nothing from anyone else, you know, that's all controlled by you. So your GPA is going to be your grade point average. Everyone should know that. Um, you need to have a really high GPA uh, with respect to the average population. Um, I would say that it's going to be really tough for you to get into medical school with anything below a 3.3. And you're definitely not guaranteed anything with a 3.3. Um, I'd say that you can be a little bit more relaxed with the rest of your application if you have about a 3.6 or better. Um, and most medical schools' averages are as low as a 3.5, I think. So basically, if you have a 3.6, I think you can be a little less um, sh like critical of yourself um, in the other aspects, but if you have a 3-3, three, three, you definitely need to have something outstanding about you in another aspect of the application. Um, aside from GPA, the second biggest thing that I would say is your MCAT, M-C-A-T, which is Medical College Admissions Test. <clears throat> and basically your MCAT is known as the equalizer because GPA is relative to your institution that you're getting your degree from. So if you're at a place like a community college, I mean, I know you can't get a bachelor's from a community college, but if you're at a community college and you have a 4.0, it's going to be a little hard to compare you and someone who graduated from Harvard with like a 3.5, because which one was harder, you know, what what kind of professors are there, and stuff like that. And the Harvard person may be smarter than you, even though he has a 3.5 and you have a 4.0, because I would say that Harvard is a lot harder than pretty much every community college out there. You know what I mean? So um, the MCAT is the equalizer because everyone takes the same test. Um, everyone's on the same scale of grading. Everyone... It's everything is equal for everyone. So the smartest people, theoretically, should be getting the highest scores. So I would say that your MCAT is the second most important thing next to GPA. And then the other four things that I would cover are probably all trade-offs. Um, some may be more important to some people. Others are more important to other people. So stuff like that. But your GPA and your MCAT are going to be the first things that medical schools look at. And um, those can be clarified as your quote-unquote numbers. Um, and basically, if your MCAT and GPA are good by the school standards, that will get you into an interview. And all this other stuff that I'm about to mention is stuff that you would talk about in your interview and stuff that would determine whether the school actually accepts you past the first, the first cut, so to speak. Um, so aside from GPA and MCAT, the things that they look at are volunteering, um, shadowing, uh, research, and leadership. 
there's a few more things, but those are those are basically the six things that every medical school is going to look at. Um, also, personal experiences would be one, but that's more of an interview question than anything. Um, volunteering, shadowing, leadership, and research. So by volunteering, just getting um, into, like it doesn't even have to be medically relevant. They just want to see that you care about something and that you're willing to put in some time, uncompensated time, I guess, like uh, that you basically have a heart and that you have a passion for helping people without being compensated. And that's all that they kind of want for volunteering. Um, they're sensitive to the fact that some people can't volunteer because they simply don't have the time. Um, I'm going to try and volunteer a little bit this semester, but I honestly would say that I don't have a, the time to do anything significant with volunteering. Like maybe, I don't even know how much I can volunteer. I would, I'd say that 10 hours a month is pushing it. So, and, and that's not a lot. So, um, but if I volunteered, it would be at a hospital just because it would knock out a few things like uh, I would have some hospital experience I would know the culture of a hospital um, and it shows that I care stuff like that but outside of volunteering all they're looking at, or with volunteering all they're looking for is basically that you care um, and that you're willing to give away your time for something and then shadowing which means shadowing your physician or a physician and basically that just shows the medical school that or shows the um, admissions committee that you know what you're getting into. Um, by shadowing physician you're getting um, a view of what their everyday life is, like what their uh, professional life at least, how they go about handling different situations, how they talk to their employees, how they talk to their supervisors maybe, um, how a hospital or private practice works, stuff like that. Um, so that's all they're really getting with shadowing. I would say that shadowing is a little bit more important than volunteering just because if you have a good heart and don't know what you're getting into you can easily have a good heart and quit and if you don't volunteer but you've shadowed you already know what it's get, you're getting into and maybe you just didn't have time to have a good heart or to show that you have a good heart um, and that's that and then leadership is basically as a doctor, or you go to medical school to become a doctor, you don't go to medical school to become, to, to become a nurse, you go to nursing school to become a nurse. So as a doctor, you're pretty much the leader of your practice. Um, even in hospitals, like you are over so many people. Like um, some doctors have physician assistants, pretty much all doctors have nurses, um, just regular office employees like accountants and stuff. Like you're you're in charge of all of those. Like, you're the leader of your medical and professional team. So leadership experience would just say, basically, I I have the experience to be a doctor. Like, I can lead my medical team or my professional team with no problem because I've been leading my, medic, my organization or club or whatever you're leading um, in college. So basically, leadership, I'd say, is a big deal. Um, so if you can get leadership experience, that's always going to look good. Um, basically, the best thing for leadership experience would be to either be an RA, um, or be a president, or have an officer position in a club or sport, like a captain of a team, or a president, vice president, secretary, treasurer of a club or organization, or something like that, or maybe even start your own organization, that would be leadership as well. Um, and maybe if you can get employment as a manager, because you're being a leader and you're getting paid, so it's killing two birds with one stone there. Um, and then research just <clears throat> shows that you can work independently, kind of. Um, in medical school, you're going to have to do a little bit of research. Um, as a doctor, you're going to have to do a little bit of research. So just to supplement your overall application with research. And that can just be done with um, summer research programs. There's tons of them. Um, I know I'm signing up for about, I'm going to apply to about 20 of them for this summer. Um, hopefully I get the one that I want. The one that I want is at MD Anderson. Um, and there's even, there's probably eight or nine related to medicine at MD Anderson. So 
Um, and I don't even know what to tell which one to tell you. But basically, there's no matter where you're at, there's tons. As long as there's a hospital or a medical school near you, they always have summer research programs. Um, I don't know exactly what the qualifications are where you are, but generally here, if you have above a 3.5, you're fine. Um, 3.5, no conduct implications or complications or anything like that. So uh, you'd be fine as long as you have a 3.5, you can get into... I wouldn't say that you get into everyone, but I'd say that if you applied to 10, you'd get into five of them. So, um, and that's kind of it. So if you can just get all those down, um, handle, handle whatever you need to handle to get those done, I'd say that you'd have a really, really good chance as long as your numbers are looking okay, like your GPA is above a 3, I'd say above a 3, 4, and your MCAT is like a 2 probably above a 24, depending on what your GPA is. If you have like a 3.3 GPA, your MCAT's going to need to be a lot higher than a 24. I'd say that you need like a 35 or a 36 or something like that. But um, that's just my impression. And I've been to a lot of uh, workshops, a lot of um, orientations, um, a lot of programs, uh, a lot of conferences, and stuff like that. So um, I have a general idea. And I have an even more specific idea that I'm going to share later on. But I just wanted to make sure that I got at least one medical video, like one legitimate medical video, um, before school started. And here it is, because I start school tomorrow. Like I said in my other video, I'm a procrastinator. So here we are today, you know. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. And if you need any specifics, just email me um, or comment on this or find me on Facebook. That's on my channel. Pay, like my main channel page. Um, there's a link under the websites. And I will try and leave an email here. So, um, I don't know what else I want to say. I hope everyone who has already started school is doing well. I know you probably won't have any tests for, for another week or so, but hopefully your studies are going well. Hopefully you're not having any problems. And if you are having problems, hopefully you're going to find a solution to those problems. Um, but I wish you all the best, and for those of you who are starting school tomorrow like me, or even later into the future, I mean, just get ready. Just be prepared. So that's what I'm going to do. I've already got my bags packed. I've already got my papers signed. I've already got my food for tomorrow's breakfast, stuff like that. The only thing I need to do is pick out an outfit, and I'm probably not going to do that until tomorrow because I really don't care. Um... But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I will be talking to you guys shortly, hopefully. And if I get just, like, plastered with work, be sure to check out my blog, because I will be updating that instead of making a video just because it doesn't take as much time. So, I'll see you guys later. Holla for a dollar for a pina colada. Yeah, I know. It's back. It's been a while. I've had a few rough days. Okay, see you guys later.